Hi, everyone. We are the Pass the Time Players, and we want to welcome you this evening to our new story, The Giant's Wife. Now, before we get started, we want to give you one little reminder. Please like our Facebook page and follow us on YouTube so that you won't miss any of our stories that we're going to be bringing to you. So, without any further ado, let's meet our cast. Hi, I'm Allison. I'll be playing narrator one. Hi, I'm Debbie, and I'll be playing narrator two. Hello, I'm Joe, and I'll be playing Finn McCool. Hi, I'm Mary Beth, and I'll be playing Una. And hello, I'm Charles, and I'll be playing Cahalan. All right, now, sit back, get yourself comfy, relax, and enjoy The Giant's Wife. Once upon a time, many years ago, there lived a giant named Finn McCool. That's me name. One thing Finn is said to have done and was to make a road that crossed from the Sea of Ireland to Scotland. It's called the Giant's Causeway, and it's a group of great rocks all fitting together. Now, this story happened when Finn was building his road. At the time we're talking about, Finn was a worried giant. He'd been told that another giant called Cahullan was looking for him to challenge him to a fight to find out which of them was the strongest. <sighs> now, this Cahullan was said to have beaten every giant in Ireland except Finn. And the thought of meeting him face to face made Finn shake in his boots. Well, when Finn had been working away from home a good many months, he decided to go home and see his wife, a fine woman named Una. Home was two counties away. But that wasn't far for a man like Finn. He pulled up a fir tree by its roots, a full-grown tree, mind you, and stripped off the branches to make himself a walking stick. Then off he set, and in no time at all, he reached his own mountain and the house he'd built on it. And there was Una to greet him. Ah, uh, Una, me love. Oh, Finn, it's glad I am to see you. I hope you're a bit hungry, for I fixed a little something when I saw you coming. <laughs> she sat him down to a grand meal of three whole roast oxen, 30 boiled cabbages, and a pile of the best bread loaves which she had just taken from the oven. A finer cook never filled this great belly. But Una could see that her husband was worried about something. What worries you, Finn? Oh, Una. It's this Cahalan. Finn told her how the dreaded giant was looking for him. And every time I suck me thumb, I get more worried about him. You see, Finn had a magic thumb. And if he sucked it, it would warn him of any danger. Now Una was worried too, but she had an idea. Go now and look across the mountain for his coming. You're sure to see him on his way, and that'll give us time to prepare a special welcome. So Finn McCool did what his wife bid, for he knew her to be a woman of great good sense. And inside the house, Una cleared the table and began baking a new batch of bread loaves. They were the big, flat loaves you can see in Ireland to this day. But this was a special batch indeed, for inside each loaf, she put a great iron griddle. Well, at last Finn ran into the house. Una, he's coming, and he's a terrible size of a creature. What can I do? If I run away, I'll be shamed forever, and if I stay here, he'll tie me body into knots. Now, be easy now, Finn. Just do what I say, and as, uh, before the day is out, maybe his own forefinger will betray him. You see, Cahullan, too, had a magic finger. All his strength was in the forefinger of his right hand. If he lost that finger, he'd be no stronger than an, any ordinary man. He's coming. He'll be here in a minute. Now hold your tongue, Finn, and, and put on this nightgown of mine. What? Me? Put on the clothes of a woman? Are you trying to make a fool of me? Trust me now, Finn. Oh, all right. 
So, grumbling away, Finn put on his wife's nightgown. Una put a white bonnet on his head and pushed him toward a cradle in the corner. Woman, w w what do you think you're doing? Oh, just lie down in the cradle there, Finn, and you'll need this baby bottle, too. Una pushed the baby bottle into Finn's mouth. Now, keep yourself quiet and leave everything to me. Just then, Cahollin came walking up fast to the house. Good day to you. Oh, come in then and welcome. Uh, Twill grieve my husband to know you called when he wasn't here to greet you. Well now, that's very civil of you, woman. But it grieves me even more to learn he's not at home. Because I was told I'd find him here. Well, now, you were told wrong, for Finn is away at his causeway. He went rushing there in a terrible rage. It seems that some giant called Cahullin has been looking for him, and Finn went off to teach that fool a lesson. Then I'll go and find him there, for I'm Cahullin, and I won't rest till i settled any argument about whether he's stronger than they. Oh, don't be in such a hurry. Come in and take your rest a while. You'll need it if it's Finn you're going to fight, for he's twice your size and ten times stronger looking. <sighs> Finn nearly fell out of the cradle with fright. Oh, why does she have to go and blab like that? Why doesn't she just let him go? But Una wasn't so anxious to get rid of Cuchulain. Now, just set yourself down and I'll have a meal ready for you in no time. I I've got the bread all baked and a lovely pot to stew on the fire. Oh, while you're waiting, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. A, a cold wind blows in at the door this time of day. Um, would you be so kind as to turn the house round? Finn always does it for me when he's home. Certainly. Up he got and went outside. With no bother at all, he picked up the whole house and turned it to face the other way. Una was a bit surprised, because Finn himself couldn't have done that. She just made that up to frighten Cuchulain, but she didn't let on when he came back in. Oh, uh, thank you kindly. There's just one other thing I'm, I'm hoping you won't mind my asking. Ask on, good woman. Well, Finn was going to make a new well for me near the house, but he forgot to do it. He left in such a terrible temper. There's water under all that rock for certain. All you need to do is pull the mountain apart. All right, then. I'll see if I can find it for you. And off he went again. From the front door, Una watched him put his big fingers into a little crack in the rock. And with a couple of tugs, he ripped open the mountainside so the water gushed out. Now Una had made that up too. So when he came back, she again tried not to look surprised. Oh, uh, come in now and eat. <laughs> she sat him down and put his food before him with a big pile of bread loaves, the ones she'd made with the iron griddles inside. Now, that's fine looking bread. Cahullin picked up a loaf and sunk his teeth into it. Oh, a thousand thunderbolts! Woman, what did you put in your bread? Well, nothing. What ails you, tall man? That's the bread my husband eats six dozen loaves of every day. You may hate the stuff. Sir, it's hard as rock. And I lost one of my good front teeth on the first mouthful. Didn't I say you were a poor, weak thing compared to Finn? You'll regret the day he gets his hands on you. Nonsense. If he can eat this bread, so can I. He picked up another loaf and dug his teeth into it. Oh! You lost me on the front tooth. Oh, man, it's a good job you've never met up with Finn. It's more than your two front teeth you'd, lo you'd lost. You're tricking me. I don't believe any man eats bread like that. Oh, don't you now? Just wait till you see this. 
she took one of the loaves off the table and walked over to the cradle where Finn was lying, dressed like a baby. This is Finn's son. Isn't he a fine little lad, just like his daddy? <laughs> oh, here you are, me dove. Have a bit of bread. Finn looked worried, but he, he had just seen Cahullan break both of his front teeth on the bread, and this loaf looked just like all the rest, but Una knew it was the only one without an iron griddle. She gave Finn a big wink. Then Finn took a bite of the loaf that took away half the side of it. Mmm. -hmm. That's amazing. And you tell me, this is Finn McCool's child? None other. So you can guess what size of man his daddy is. He must have a powerful set of teeth. Now this was just what Una was hoping for. Oh, a grand set. Just slip your finger in there to feel him. Open your mouth now, baby, and let the nice man put his big, strong finger there. Una gave Finn another big wink. So Cuhullin slipped his great right forefinger into Finn's mouth. Oh, push it in, well in there till you feel the back ones. Cuhullin pushed in his finger as far as it would go. Snap! Finn bit it off and swallowed it. <laughs> Cahullin roared with pain and held up his hand with the forefinger missing, staring at it in disbelief. Oh, Finn jumped from the cradle, threw off his nightshirt. Now, what did you say you'd do to Finn McCool? Cahullin stared at Finn, very angry and in a great deal of pain. He made a great swipe at Finn with his fist. He hit Finn square in the jaw, but it barely felt like a tiny tap to Finn. Cahullin had lost his forefinger and with it all of his strength. So all he did was hurt his hand. Cahullin screamed in pain and ran off. Yes, you'd, you'd, you'd better run. <laughs> now, Finn, don't be too hard on the poor thing. <laughs> Finn chased Cahullin halfway across Ireland before he let him go. And after that, he was free to get on with his road. The end. We hope you enjoyed our story tonight. Remember, like our Facebook page and follow us on YouTube. So until next time, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.